Okay, all praise to the Most High. Okay, um, again, tonight's topic is called History Reloaded. We're going to go over to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Okay. Deuteronomy 4, verse 1. Let's start this. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Read that again, this one. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So now we are commanded to hearken, to pay attention, to pay close attention. Okay? The reason why he's saying this is because because Christ kept saying this over and over. Watch this. Give me that in, uh, what is that in the background? Give me that in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13 and verse 9. Hmm. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. He, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Read again. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. So obviously, Christ wasn't saying you don't have ears on the side of your head. No, you do have ears. So he's saying, but open your spiritual ears so you can hear what is coming up. That's what he's saying right there. Why? Because when we don't keep the commandments, when we are not focused on God's laws, here's what happens. Give me that in Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel 12, verse 1. Ezekiel 12, verse 1 and 2. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord also came to me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. Mm. They have ears to hear and hear not. For they are a rebellious house. You see what the problem is? <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason why the Lord keeps saying, uh, He says, Now therefore, hearken, O Israel. He says, Open your ears, because um, what I'm about to tell you, what I'm about to teach you, is going to what? Is going to help you in, in time to come. That's what He was telling you. But guess what? The reason why we don't hear is one ear after the other. What is the spirit that is moving? Guess what? So it was back then, so it is today. Because the reason why he's saying, which have ears, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not. For, meaning because they are a rebellious house. So the reason why inspection goes up, brothers and sisters don't do it, or they do, they do a half ass job, is because the spirit of rebellion is, is the reason why they move the way they do. Let me read that again. Read verse 2 again. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 2. Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house. Go ahead. Which have eyes to see and see not. Mm -hmm. And they have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. So the reason why you have eyes but you don't see what you are reading, you have ears but you cannot apply what you are receiving, is because you are rebellious to the Lord of God. Watch this. Give me the book of First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 22. First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 22. Go ahead. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. You see what he's saying? He says to obey is better. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rain. So you must obey and hearken. That's what we just read in Deuteronomy 4 verse 1. He's about to give us the law, statutes and commandments and judgments for breaking these laws. He says hearken means pay attention. Open your spiritual eyes and ears so you can see, so you can hear and see that which is coming up. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 23, mm -hmm. for, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You see that thing? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft. 
So when you are rebellious, you are a witch. Okay? When you are a, when you are rebellious to the laws of God, you are a witch in the sight of the most high God. Give me hold this. Give me Exodus 22, verse 18. This is the judgment for witchcraft. Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, that's the one. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. You see what the judgment, he says, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not allow a witch to live. Meaning what? What is the judgment? Death is the judgment. Watch this. Leviticus 20, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits. That I want. After, after such as have familiar spirits. As such as a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit meaning what? You deal in, you, deal in, you consult with images. You go to Sangomas. You understand? You be worshipping beasts. You understand? Lighting candles and stuff like that. You understand? Putting water in bottles and say the water heals and so That's witchcraft. All of that does witchcraft. So guess what? What we are reading here is the people that do those things. So the Lord is saying is the exact same way. The same thing that they are doing is the same thing that when you rebel against the Lord. The Lord says there is no difference between you and them. The Lord to the, in the sight of the Most High is the same thing. Go ahead. And after wizards to mm -hmm. go whoring after them. Mm -hmm. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. You see what the Lord is saying? So guess what? When, when you get corrected or counseled, because a lot of the time, counsel is not correction. Or let me say that it's basically the same thing. My point is, when you don't apply the counsel, the Lord is saying, this is the problem right here. The spirit of rebellion. Witchcraft. Okay? Now jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. A man also, or woman, that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. Shall what? Shall surely be put to death. Shall, that's the judgment. That's the same thing we read in Exodus 22. Shall surely be what? Shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. So during the time of Moses, there was no atonement for witchcraft. That was says their blood shall be upon them. So idolatry, you couldn't atone for idolatry. You could not atone for them. Why? Because there's, there was no sacrifice that could be used to atone for that sin. So you had to die. You were the sacrifice. That's the reason why Northern Kingdom could not be brought back into the fold until Christ would show up on the scene. Because if it wasn't for Christ, Northern Kingdom was not going to be allowed to come back into the fold. Because the judgment for idolatry was what? Death. So it needed Christ to come through to be able to spill his blood so that Northern Kingdom can be brought back into the fold and all 12 can be washed with the blood of Christ. Meaning what? The sins that could not be atoned for under Moses, you had to die. That's the reason why Christ came. That's, what, that's why he came. To give us a chance to get the kingdom for the sins that could not be atoned for under the old covenant. Okay? So that's what this is going into. Okay, let's go back. Um, go back to 1 Samuel 15 verse 23 again. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So when you are stubborn, guess what? Your sin is idolatry. Because you worship your anger. You worship your mind because you are rebellious. Your mind and your emo emotions is what you worship. Because when correction goes out, the reason why you don't do it is because you don't like being told what to do. You don't want the Lord correcting you. So guess what? You become rebellious. You become passive-aggressive. You don't apply just to be dragging your feet. 
because you are a baby, because you are a baby. Okay, keep going, read on. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So mean, which means, which means what? As long as if you, if any of you, you are dealing with the spirit of rebellion, you're not going to get the kingdom with that spirit. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel 20. Remember, we're dealing with the spirit of rebellion, right? Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 35. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 35. Mm -hmm. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Mm. And they will I plead with you face to face. So the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to plead with you face to face. I'm going to teach you again. Go ahead. Verse 36. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Meaning what? When the Lord returns, we're going right back to the wilderness again. Okay, go ahead. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, mm -hmm. and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Meaning at that point, grace is over. Go ahead. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. Stop right there. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, and I will purge out from among you the rebels. Meaning what? Those that are rebellious, those that are stubborn, they don't want to apply. And if they do, they just do the bare minimum, just to put a small screen. The Lord is saying, oh, when he returns, you can use, you'll be in the chariot. But you, the reason why you're in the chariot is so that you can be in the wilderness and be put to death in the wilderness. Really just think about that. some heavy stuff right there. Listen, when I read this, listen, this is supposed to put chills in your spine. Is it? I don't want to be part of this group right here. I do want the chariots to come and pick me up, but I do not want to be part of this place right here as a rebel. I don't want to be a rebel, meaning rebellious, because that's where the word rebellious comes from. Rebel. Rebellious against what? He's going to tell you. Next verse, next part of the verse. Go ahead. And them that transgress against me. You see that part right there? That's what that's what that, that's what it means to be rebellious against the most high. You are rebellious against his laws because you transgress against his commandments. Go ahead. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says they shall not enter into the land of Israel. There is basically is the replay of the wilderness when we came out of Egypt. Guess what? This is going to happen once again. So you really need to sit down and say, do I have time to be playing games in this school? You don't got time for that. Nobody has time for that thing. You don't got time to be shaking and jagging playing games. When something is commanded of you to get, get it done. Don't be wasting time on it. Why? Because the time is at hand. We are almost out of here. The time is at hand, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You see, the Lord is giving us the key to the kingdom right here. It says, Hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments. The statutes and the judgments, the statutes is going into the law. The judgment is the punishment for those laws. And if you keep the statutes, you're going to receive righteous judgment. The Lord will get a reward. Watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 13. Because the statutes, the commandments, the laws, it's all one and the same thing. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13. Go ahead. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments, and true laws, good statutes, and commandments. Go ahead, come on. And madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest it, 
and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant. So it's all the same thing. So statutes, laws, commandments, you understand? Precepts, it's all the same thing. And the judgment for breaking the law, statutes, and the precepts and commandments. It's all saying the same thing. It's all the same. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 4 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Next verse. Go ahead. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye, demin neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So now this is the law, it's illicit. You must not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So he's telling us, meaning don't add, don't add your spices, don't remove nothing from the word of the Most High. It's pure, it's perfect. Just do what it says. Because guess what? In, in our, our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, there's a lot of translations that they use. NIV, you understand? The New King James and so forth. The ESV, so on and so forth. The Jehovah's Wickedness, Bible. And listen, they have added, they've removed stuff in the Bible. The word black is now, is now replaced with dark. Okay? Some verses are taken out of the Bible. So guess what? And when we read out of the King James Version Bible, guess what? Our people, they read out of the NIV and all that. So when we read this, it's like it does not, they don't understand what the Bible is saying because of what our oppressors are tempering with in the word of God. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 6. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 6. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6. Go ahead. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, don't add. You know, start at verse 5, so we can understand why. Start at verse 5. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Every word of God is pure. Is what? Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure, is pure, is pure. Go ahead. He is as a shield unto them that put their trust in him. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. You see that part right there when it says every, every meaning what? One job, where there is a comma, it is shield, every word of God is pure. What is this going into? Give me that in Psalms 19 verse 7. The book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Is what? The law of the Lord is perfect. The, the law, the laws of the, the laws of the most high God is perfect. Pure. The same thing. The word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is perfect. Watch this. Revelation um, Romans 2. Because the apostle Paul said the same thing. Okay, uh, Romans 2 verse 18. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Mm -hmm. And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. So the things that are more excellent is what? The laws of God. The things that are more excellent, pure, perfect, is the laws of God. The Apostle Paul is saying the same thing. Let's go back. Proverbs 30 verse 6 again. I mean verse 5. Proverbs 30 verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is as a shield. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Go ahead. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Then thou be found a liar. And guess what? Guess what we are doing right now? We are proving the nations to be liars based on what they've done to this Bible to confuse our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, okay, and in Islam. All right, give me Revelation 22, verse 18. John the Revelation said the same thing. 
Revelation chapter 22 verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Mm. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add him, the God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the in this book. You see what the Lord is saying? If every man shall add, you understand? If any man shall add unto these, these things, what is these things? The word, the words that are written in this Bible. That's the same thing we read in Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, Proverbs 8, verse 6. Next verse. Go ahead. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life mm. and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So now you really have to imagine the pastors that are leading our people astray. Your, your Pastor Chris, your Bushiri, your Mboro, Pastor Mukuba. Listen, they are adding and they are removing from the word of God because the things that the Bible says as it is written, they are adding their own things. No, it doesn't say that. And what he's actually saying is that. So guess what? The people that are following them also, they also going to get the judgment if they don't repent. Okay? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. Mm -hmm. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not aid the two, nor diminish from it. You see what the Lord is saying? He keeps repeating himself over and over because he knew that in the last days, that's what our, 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 our people will do, those that are pastors and all of that, they will do that thing. They are going to handle the word of God deceitfully. Give me that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. They are not going to renounce the hidden, the hidden things of dishonest. No, they are going to handle the word of God deceitfully. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this this mystery. No. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, mm -hmm. as we have received mercy, we faint not. As we have received mercy, we faint not. The mercy, what is the mercy? Christ dying on Christ dying on the cross for the 12 tribes of Israel. When Christ died for us, that was the mercy of the Lord. Okay, come on. But have you renounced the hidden things of dishonesty? You see that those the, the hidden things of dishonesty is what? Lies, deceit, covetousness. You understand? Hatred, envy, so on and so forth. Come on. Not walking in, in craftiness. Not walking in craftiness. Okay, come on. That's the hidden things of dishonesty. Right? Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. That's what they do in the Christian church. They handle the word of God deceitfully. The white man has taught the black men that are receiving crumbs from the master's table to dish out the, those same crumbs to who? To our brothers and sisters that are lost, that are genuinely seeking the word of the most High God. Okay, come on. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves, every man's conscience in the sight of God. You see what he's saying? Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. How do we commend ourselves to every man's conscience? Give me that in 1 Peter 3 21. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Come on. Verse 22. No, no. Oh. You, you skip something. Read the verse 21 again. First Peter, chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection. Of Jesus Christ. So now when he says, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. So for you to have a good conscience towards God, which is what we just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it is commending ourselves 
to every man's conscience in the sight of God. When we commend our, to commend ourselves, you understand, to commend ourselves to every man's conscience, guess what? We must have a good conscience towards God. How do we have a good conscience towards God? Give me that in Romans 7 verse 12. Okay. This is how you have a good conscience towards God. This is how we commend ourselves to our people with a good conscience towards God. This is what we used to do that day. Watch this. Romans 7 verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. You see that thing? The law is holy, the commandment is holy, just and good. So for you to have a good conscience towards the most High God and to commend yourself to the people's conscience, you need the word of God, you need the law, you need the commandment, the precepts, the statutes, and the judgments for breaking these laws. Okay? Let's go back. Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4. There's two again. Deuteronomy chapter 4 is 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. You see that thing? So the reason why we must do that, we must teach it as it is. The Bible says teach the laws of God as it is. Listen. Don't be adding your own things. Don't bring new spices and none of that stuff. Just teach it as it is written. And the most that God will be happy about that. That's what the Lord wants. As it is written. Give me that in First Peter 4. Verse 11. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11. Go ahead. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. You see that thing? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. The oracles of God is the command. If you speak, you must speak as the oracles of God. Jeremiah 5, 14. Give me that. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Go ahead. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, because ye what? Because ye speak this word. Because ye speak this word. This word, not your word. No, this word that I'm giving you. Because you speak the word that I'm commanding you to speak. Go ahead. Behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Mm -hmm. And this people would, and it shall devour thee. You see that thing? I will make my, my, it says, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people will be wood, and it shall devour them. Now, watch this. Give me the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, okay? Something just popped into my head. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Is that what I want? I believe that's what I want. I have 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse... Start at verse... Yeah, I read verse 12. Let's get to the point. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12. Now, if any man built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, stubble. Guess what? If you don't build upon the foundation of gold, silver, and precious stones, you're going to be wood, hay, or stubble. Guess what? When the word of God comes out, it's going to bang. Because you are building upon wood, hay, and stubble. You don't have a strong foundation. So when the scriptures come out, like our people in the Christian church, guess what? They are built on wood, hay, and stubble. So when the laws of God come out, they get burned, they get cut immediately. Why? Because they are not, they are not building upon the foundation of gold, silver, and precious stones. They are not. Okay? That's why. Now, Go back to Deuteronomy 4 now. Deuteronomy 4, read the three now. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all men that followed Baal Peor, 
the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. You see, our forefathers, because in the wilderness, they followed with Baal, Yor, Baal, Balaam. So if you read the book of Numbers, if you read the book of Numbers 22, okay, let me touch on that real quick. Read that again, verse 3, so we can touch on that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. You see, those that followed Baal Peor, meaning the devil, guess what happened? The Lord says he destroyed them. Watch this. Let's go to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 22. Let's start at verse 1. Numbers chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. Come on. And Balak, the son of Zippo, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Come on. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. So now what you are seeing here is that Balak, the son of the, the son of Zippor, he saw us, okay, we were in the land. Where we were in their land, okay? It says, and Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. Because listen, we outnumber all nations on earth. Now remember, when we left Egypt, it says the 600,000 men, footmen, you understand? Just the men. He didn't count the women and the children. So you can imagine how many we were when we left Egypt. Now we are in the wilderness and we are multiplying in the wilderness still. So now Balak is seeing this thing. You don't like him. Okay? Go ahead. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. <laughs> Go ahead. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. So Balak was the king of the Moabites. Now he's going to confess because he's mad as hell. You don't like what he's seeing. They despise, they hate us. Even today, they still they do the same thing. They say we are too many. So what do they do? They introduce, abor they introduce abortion. They are quote-unquote legal abortion. Okay. Um, morning after pill. Okay tying your tubes, okay, the injection so you don't fall pregnant and so forth, so your, your womb can be destroyed while you are injecting yourself, teenage, uh, you know, abortion and stuff like that, that is exactly what, that's how, because we are men, they want to come up with a strategy to destroy us, it was back then, so it is today, all the nations are doing it, go ahead. He sent messengers, therefore, to, unto Balaam, the son of Beo to Petho, mm -hmm. which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. You see what he's saying? He says, Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. So now he decided, you know what? Let me go and speak to Balaam, the son of Beo. You understand? To do what? Next verse. Verse 6 now. Watch this. Verse 6. Come now therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. For adventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessed, blessest bl is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. So now, you see what he's doing? He's consulting with Balaam to curse us. That's what he's doing. Okay? Because he says, because we are many, so he can, he can be driven out. Now watch this. Give me the book of Colossians 2 verse 8. You know what? Give me Isaiah 42 verse 22. Let's read that. Isaiah 42 verse 22. Let's read about that. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Come on. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. This is a what? But this is a people robbed and spoiled. So these people that is robbed and spoiled, 
okay, is the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's talk about us. We are the people that is robbed and spoiled. If you jump up to verse 1, you'll get the information, you'll get, you get understanding who is making reference to. Read verse 1. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mm. mine elect. My what? Mine elect. Mine elect. Mine elect. Who's God's elect? The next two chapters, 45 and verse 4. Read that. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. And now, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Let's go back. Isaiah 42, verse 1 again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, my servants whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted. Mm. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. That's talking about Northern Kingdom. Go ahead. Now, jump down to where he was at now. Verse, 40, verse 22. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. For, they are for a prey and none delivereth. For a spoil and none saith restore. So now what you want to notice here is that this is a people robbed and spoiled. We are robbed of our resources. We are robbed of our culture, our nationality, our history. You understand? Our Bible, our land is taken from us. Everything about us was being stolen from us by force, by violence. It says we are robbed and we are spoiled. The nations are spoiling us. So the same way Balak requested Balaam to cast us is the same thing that the nations are doing today. Because guess what? We are in New Egypt. You understand? Spiritual Egypt. So the same way um, Pharaoh had a council. Give me Exodus now 1. Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. Watch this. Exodus chapter 1. Verse 8. The, the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. You see that thing? That was Amos the first. That was Amos the first. Okay, 1300 BC. This is from the 17th century on up. So that this is during the time of the 18th dynasty. Not the 17th century, I'm sorry. The 17th dynasty. So this is. The 17th dynasty ended, now is the 18th dynasty, which knew not Joseph. Okay, so Amos the first, he's the new king over Egypt. Over time, it became Ramses the second, because that's when we left Egypt. Okay, read that again, verse 8. Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Go ahead. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. So now he called his people, he called his Pharaoh requested a council. Amos the first. He said, listen, we need to have a sit down, gentlemen, because what I was seeing upon the land, we're going to have problems if we don't deal with this thing. Next verse. Go ahead. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. You see that thing? Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. The same thing that Balak did when he requested Balaam to curse Israel. So now he says, come on, let us deal wisely with them. What is the reason why they want to deal wisely with us? Watch this. Come on. Lest they multiply. And it comes to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them out, out of the land. So this was over time. They started to work. We, we, we started to multiply over time. And this is the reason why they were motivated to have a council. So the same thing that we are reading here when it says, the reason why they want to have a council is because lest they multiply, lest they multiply and it come to pass, meaning over time, we started to begin to multiply. So that's the same reason that Baylor, Baylor, that Baylor, Baylor gave. He said, listen, catch me these people because there are too many. Guess what? The same thing is happening today. Okay, the nations decided to have a council. Guess what? To what? To rob and to spoil us. Because we are becoming too many. 
You understand? Watch this. Give me, um, go back to, give back to numbers. Go back to numbers real quick. Go back to numbers, chapter 22. Okay, and verse six again. Numbers chapter 22, verse six. Mm -hmm. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Really? Per adventure, I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Now watch this. Now, fast forward to today. Remember we read in Isaiah 42, verse 22. This is the people rob and spoil. Rob and spoil. Spoil. Watch this. Mm. Hold on. Give me Isaiah 17. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. We're going to read that. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. Go ahead. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas mm -hmm. and to the rushing of the nations of and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Now that's going into the nations that spoil and rob us or that rob and spoil us. Go ahead. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee and they shall flee far off really? and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind uh -huh. and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. That's when the Lord is going to bring judgment on these nations. Watch the next, the next verse. Go ahead. And behold, at evening, at evening tide, trouble. At evening tide. It's evening tide, that's morning. Evening tide. Go ahead. And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. And this is the portion of them that spoil us, mm. and the lot of them that rob us. You see that thing? So the portion meaning the judgment of the nations that are robbing us, that are spoiling us, is what? The Lord is telling you what he's going to do. It says, uh, but God shall rebuke them. They shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind like a rolling thing before the world went, meaning they are going to be devoured. Because why? The judgment of the judgment that is going to come upon them is because of what? They wrong and they spoil us. That's why it says, this is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. Now go back to Isaiah 42 verse 22 again. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 22. Mm -hmm. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Go ahead. They are all of them snared in holes. Uh -huh. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth. For a spoil and none saith restore. Now I want you to focus on this part when it says this, that this is a people robbed and spoiled. We are robbed. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 16. 2nd Ezra chapter 16. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse, verse 46. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 46. Go ahead. For strangers shall reap their fruits mm -hmm. and spoil their goods. And what? And spoil their goods. Is the strangers shall reap their fruit and spoil their goods. So they rob and they spoil us of our fruit. Go ahead. And spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. You take their children captives. That's what we read in Isaiah. When you read the book of Isaiah, you read the book of Ezra, they are saying the same thing. They, 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 with the things that Isaiah would say, you, you can see that, um, no, the things that Ezra would say is the things that you can see that he was reading a lot of the things that Isaiah wrote. Okay? So the same, they are saying the same thing. For strangers shall read their fruit and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. That's why this is the people robbed and spoiled. They are all snared in, snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are, guess what? Who's filling up the prison? The black man. Okay. 
they are hidden prison houses. Go ahead. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. You see that thing? Because how did we become captive? How did we lose everything of ours? Because our enemies are robbing us. They are spoiling us. Okay, come on. And they that occupy the merchandise with robbery. With what? With robbery. With robbery. They occupy our merchandise with robbery. The merchandise is the food. You understand? Our goods, our houses, our children. You see that thing? That's our merchandise. Those are the things that, these are our prized possessions that we've got. Okay? But it says, and they that occupy their merchandise. How did they occupy our merchandise? They robbed it. They robbed the merchandise. They robbed us of our merchandise. That's what it says. And they that occupy, now they have it in their, in, in, in their possession. You understand? They are merchandise with robbery. That's why it says, this is the portion of them that spoil us, of them that rob us. Go ahead. The more they dig their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons. Read. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. The Lord is says he's going to judge them. That's the same thing we read in Isaiah chapter 17. Okay. So they rob us of our possessions. And they spoil us. Now watch this. Give me the book of Colossians 2 verse 8. Remember, don't forget the point now. Don't forget the point of what we read in, in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 3. Don't forget what we read in Numbers chapter 22 verse 6. Don't forget what we read in Exodus chapter 1 verse 8 through 10. About the nations coming together to do what? To deal wisely with us. Because that's, that's what Bela did with Bela. Now in these last days... We're going to read about that next. Colossians 2 verse 8. This is how they spoil us. Watch this. Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. You know what? Before you get Colossians 2 verse 8, give me that in Psalm 83. Because this is the council that happened in these last days. The United Nations. Okay? The same council that Pharaoh had is the same thing that the nations had in these last days. Psalm 33 and verse 3. Watch this. Start at verse 2. Psalm chapter 83, verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, uh -huh. and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. That's the same thing that Pharaoh did. That's the same thing that Balak did with, with Balaam or Peor. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And consulted against the hidden ones. Because in these last days, we would have what? We would have lost our identity, our culture, our name, our Bible. At least in Egypt, we still knew that we are Israelites. We knew. But when Israel took over, he said, listen, strip them of their nationality. They must not remember that they are Israelites. That happened during the time of the Jews. Okay? So now he's saying they have taken crafty counsel. The same counsel that, uh, that Pharaoh did, we have the same counsel, new Pharaoh has taken against us, okay, and consulted against the hidden one. So the council was the Balfour Declaration of 1917. The Balfour Declaration of 1917, okay, which now took place in 1948. The council was taken in 1917, but it was, it was only, it only took place, it came to fruition in 1948. You see that thing? Go ahead, verse 4. Verse 4, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So now, because now they say we must cut them off from being a nation, that our name may be no more in remembrance, guess what? So now what you are seeing here is the nations that say, okay, we need to cut them off. It started with the Greeks, the Romans, and so forth. You understand? The Greeks, they, it was unlawful for them for us to call ourselves Jews. Although we still knew that we were Jews. But it was unlawful to profess that we are Jews. But that's when it started with our nationality. When Esau came into the picture in these last days, during the transatlantic, the sub-Saharan and all of that, they made sure they beat our names out of us. So we don't remember. Okay? That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance.
So now this is the council. So in order for them to beat our names out of us, they had to put something in place of it. Something had to be put in place so we remember that instead of what we're supposed to remember. Colossians 2 verse 8. So this is the crafty council. When they beat our names out of us, our nationality, our culture, this is what they put in our spirit and in our mind. Colossians 2 verse 8. That's why people are so sick. Okay? As a people, we are burnt out. Watch this. Colossians 2 verse 8. Read that. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. You see that thing? Lest any man spoil you, spoil you, spoil you. Remember that this is a people rob and spoil. This is the portion of them that spoil and rob us. So it says, this is the people rob and spoil. How did they, rob? They, they, they spoil us? They spoil us with philosophy. They spoil us with vain deceit, meaning lie, and tradition of men. So what is that called? Keep going. Watch this. After the tradition of men, uh -huh. after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now watch this. Remember, we are being spoiled with philosophy, vain deceit, and traditions of men. The rudiments of the world, meaning the workings of the world, right? Watch this. So we are spoiled, we are wrong. Now the spoiling is through this. What is this called? Give me the book of Galatians chapter 3 now. Galatians 3, start of verse 1. Listen to what the apostle Paul said there. When he was told, when he's when he was writing the letter to the Galatians, this is what he said. Watch this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has what? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? That's the question they're asking. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has cursed you? Who has spoiled you, he said. The same thing that Balak was trying to do, and he did it, but he was not successful, is because of what? Bewitching. And witchcraft requires repetition. They push it through the media, on social media, on television, on the news, is repetitive. In order for you to bewitch the people, you must repeat the, the message of witchcraft. You understand? Read the part again. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth? That's why our people do not want to hear the Bible. They don't want to hear the laws of God. When you teach the commandments to them, they become offended. Watch this. Give me that in, uh, uh, mm, let me see, let me see, Isaiah 29, verse 21. Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 21. Watch this. Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 21. Read. That make a man an offender for a word. You see that part? That make, it, that make a man an offender for a word. So now when we bring the truth out, the scriptures as it is written, the truth as it is written, we, the, our people become offended. He says that make a man an offender for a word, the word of God, because that's what we come with. Go ahead. That make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reprove it in the gate. You see what they do? Because when we go out to teach the gospel, because we teach the word, the people get offended. He says, they lay a snare for him that he proveth in the gate. Who's reproving in the gate? It's not the pastors. It's not the Christian pastors. No, it's the Israelites. We go out to the streets. We look at our people face to face and we reprove them. Guess what? He says, they lay a snare for the prophets that what that reproveth in the gate. But they're not going to succeed. Go ahead. And turn aside the just for a thing of naught. You see that thing? The just are going to turn to a thing that is, that is, that is not going to be of any profit, which is what? Christianity, Islam, politics, religion, democracy. That's what our people tend to. Okay? All because they don't want to hear the word of the Messiah. So now they become offended at the word. Okay? Go back to Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. O foolish Galatians, mm -hmm. who hath bewitched you really? that ye should not obey the truth? That ye should not obey the truth. Instead of our people obeying the laws of God so that they can see that this is for their benefit, guess what? They become offended 
then guess what? They want to lay a snare for you because you reprove them face to face. You're not afraid of them. You understand? Go ahead. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Because our people do not want to receive the truth. That's why it says that you should not obey the truth. The Apostle Paul is letting you know right there that when he says that you should not obey the truth, how do you obey the truth? So our people just read that and say, obey the truth. So how do you obey the truth? So then what is the truth that you need to obey? So that's why it says, if you have an ear, let him hear. If you have eyes to see, you want to see what he's really saying. Because that's an odd statement that he's making. Obey the truth. What does that mean? Okay, now, go back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Come on. After the tradition of men, really? after the rudiments of the world, and uh -huh. not after Christ. You see that thing? After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Nothing they teach is about the Messiah. The black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. So now, the bewitching, the, 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 the bewitching that we just read in Numbers chapter 22 verse 6 is the same thing. The nations had to sit down they formulate the, the, the United Nations, which is formerly the League of Nations, to do what? To bewitch us, to cut us off from being a nation, that our names is no more longer remembered by us. You understand? So that's why what happened back then, you cannot leave it back then. You must also bring it to today, because today our people are being bewitched. You understand? Witchcraft is constantly pushed on our, in our minds 24-7. That's why I tell you, brothers, listen, make sure that you share the videos, push the people to the website, come up with a uh, view, brothers have done advertising and marketing. Make sure that we push the people to watch to the website so they can watch these videos and learn and study and learn who they are. So we need to flood the internet with the word of the Most High God. That's why we, we're opening these YouTube channels and people must come and learn and more also, we have the website so people can come and watch. If they cannot go to YouTube, they go to the website. Either way, they must be able to hear this word. So that's what we must do these days. The way the people, the, the nations, they put us to sleep through witchcraft and lies, we're going we're gonna to wake our people up with the truth of the most High God as it is written. All right. Okay. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4. Um, I know I've, I went through, I've touched on a lot of stuff, so just take note. Okay, um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. Go ahead. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. You see that thing? So now the Lord has destroyed those men that followed Baal Peor. Because our people started to do that. And guess what? Let me give another, I'll give another example. Because this is what the nations know about us. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers chapter 24. Numbers 24 and verse... Yes, Numbers 25. I think that's what I want. Here's an example. Numbers 25 and verse... Yeah, let's start at verse 6. You know what? Start at verse 1. We're going to read that. Numbers 25 verse 1. Numbers 25 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. You see what we started to do? We started to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. So read verse 1 again. Numbers 25 and 1. Numbers chapter 25, verse 1. Uh -huh. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. So now what happened was that because when they realized that, listen, we cannot curse these people, here's what's going to happen. We need to send the women. Send our women in there, and guess what? That's how we're going to distract them and defeat them. Okay? So that's what's going on here. Next verse. Go ahead. And they call the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. So now, and the people, notice, 
there's a there's a there's a there's a hip hop artist. What's his name? Um, Young Jeezy, is it? Young Jeezy. There's a there's a track that he did that many years ago with Nas called "My President Is Black," something like that. Young Jeezy. Anybody knows that brother? So I think I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, the young Jeezy. I think she's he's married to this Moabite woman. He's married to a Moabite woman. Read that again, verse one. Numbers chapter twenty-five, verse one. Mm-hmm. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Really? And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. You see what we were doing? We were worshipping their gods now. Go ahead. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. You see that part right the, there? That's the same thing that we just read in Deuteronomy 4 verse 3. Go ahead. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. So... What I want to show you is that when the witchcraft didn't work, they started to send their women in there. That's what you see now in the entertainment industry. When you look at um, the TV shows, there's a lot of interracial marriages going on. I saw it in Soweto. There was a lot of interracial stuff going on in Soweto. It ends, it's not just Soweto. It's all over the place. Midran, all over. Guess what? Here in the Kathis, there's a lot of white people here, white women here in the Kathis. In Calfontaine, I see them every day. Okay? And it's not those white people that are struggling. No, you can see, oh, this person is not struggling. What the hell are they doing here? And you see, they live among us on a daily basis. I see it all the time. Okay? So, what is the Lord doing this? Why, why did the nations they Because the nations know how Israel is. Okay? They know, they know how Israel is. Now, go back to the book of Deuteronomy 4, verse 3. I just, there's something I wanted, but I'm not going to find it now. I don't have time. Deuteronomy 4, verse 3 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. Go ahead. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. Because those men that we read that we read about in, in, in number 25, the, the Lord commanded Moses to cut their head off and hang it on the stick so everybody can see. So Moses is recounting that history. So read number 22, read number 22 to 26. You get the whole history of what we're going over. Here. Go ahead. Verse 4. But ye did but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God. Are alive, every one of you this day. He says, Those that those that would they, they stood up for the laws of God, he says they are alive, every one of you this day. You see that thing? Guess what? The same people that was back then that that played to the Lord, those same people are back today. Understand that. Okay, that's why he is saying, you see, Moses, the stuff that he wrote in the spirit of Christ, it says. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. So we are speaking for that time and to this day. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 3. Here's, the, here's another one. Deuteronomy 5, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 3. Mm-hmm. The Lord made not his, this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us alive this day. No, no, read it right, read it right. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 3. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. You see that thing? Because me, when I read this, I was like, what is Moses saying here? Uh, in all places, I, I saw it. It's okay. Yes, it was back then, but it's also took about today. So somebody be asking you, so where are the children of Israel today? Just read this verse right here. The Lord has not made his covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, 
who are all of us here alive this day. Wherever you are teaching, here alive, here in Nigeria this day, here in Pretoria this day, here in Soweto this day, here in wherever this day. Okay? So this goes with, give me Romans 11. Watch this. Romans 11 verse 1. Mm. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's telling you that God has not cast away his people. That's the same thing that Moses is saying here. Even us who are all here, he says, who are all of us here alive? It's alive. You see that word right there? Alive. This day, 2021. God has not cast away his people. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. You see that thing? The Lord has not cast away his people because all his people are what? Are alive this day. The same thing. The Apostle Paul wasn't writing anything that, uh, because during his time, guess what? The New Testament wasn't written. So the stuff that he was, he was, he was, he was dealing with, he was dealing with this, but he was writing that he was, he was, his writing was based on what? He, it, it was based on the, the Old Testament. Everything, they were getting it from the Old Covenant. Okay. Okay, let's go back. You told me 4 verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I have told you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither, the, whither ye go to possess it. Read. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now this is a heavy verse right here. These two verses right here, the Lord says, I've taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. So the Lord commanded Moses to teach us the statutes and the judgments. You understand? Because it says, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight in the sight, in the sight of the nation. Meaning what the nations are going to see you keeping the laws. When they see us keeping the laws, guess what they will say? They say, surely this what? Surely this, na this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see that thing? That's why it says in the sight of the nations. Meaning the nations will see it with their eyes. And this is what they want to say when they see because right now, they are not saying that. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus, okay? Exodus 20, verse 7. Watch this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So now, let's get the name of the Lord. Get the, give me the name of the Lord. Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So now we know what the name of the Lord is. His name is called the Word of the Most High God, the commandment. So let's go back to Exodus 20, verse 7. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Read. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. He says, the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now we understand what the name of the Lord is. It's his, his commandment. He says, thou shalt not take the laws of God in vain. Meaning in lies. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 30 and the third. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me, deny me them not before I die. Read it again verse 7. 
Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. He says, deny me them not before I die. He's going to tell you what those things are. Go ahead. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Mm -hmm. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. So this goes into Matthew 6, verse 11. Go ahead. Verse 9. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, mm. who is the Lord? Come on. Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of the Lord my God in vain. So that's the point, that's the point right there. It says, don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The Lord is not going to hold you guiltless if you take his name in vain. Now we have established what the name of the Lord is, is his commandment. Now it says, and take the name of the name of my God in vain. Lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Let's deal with that part. This is lest I be full and deny thee. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 15. We're dealing with we're dealing with that part where it says, Lest I be full and deny thee. Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat mm. and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. You see what happened? So when we got, when we, when we had, when we was living large, everything was good. Guess what we did? When we waxed fat, Jeshurun means the upright one. When we, when we, when everything was good, when the Lord was looking after us, He says, "We wax fat and we kick. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness." Then He forsook God, which made Him, and lightly esteemed the rock of His salvation. Meaning what? When everything was good, guess what we did? Lest I be full and deny Thee, we denied the Lord and said, "Who is the Lord?" Now we don't know who's responsible for all this. We are forgetting the Holy One of Israel. Lest I be full and deny thee. Okay? Who is the Lord? Watch this. Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. You see what happens when we get full and deny the Lord? Because we are no longer keeping his commandments. We are no longer operating by what he commanded of us. Now, we get, guess what? We go into idolatry. We start to be interested in other things. Like right now we have money. We can travel. You go to China. You get Buddha. You go to India. You get Krishna. You see that thing? You go to Saudi Arabia. You bring a piece of the Kaaba store. You can't make this stuff. That's the Negro. Okay? We do that. We go to Egypt. You come with the stuff that you... That's the ancient pharaohs. You be having them in your houses and hanging there. Lest I be full and deny thee. After that... It says they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Go ahead. With abominations provoked they him to anger. We provoke the Lord to anger with our abominations of these abominable gods. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Mm. To gods who they knew not. Come on. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see what it's saying right there? So when we, when we work fact, he says, lest I be full and deny thee. When we deny the Lord, automatically we worship other gods. That's why you take the name of the Lord, your God in vain. Because you are not going, you are not now moving according to, the, to how he commanded you to move. Now you are moving according to the, the, the philosophies and the vain deceit and traditions that goes with the idol that you now worship, provoking the Lord to anger. So you taking the name of the Lord, their God in vain, you now go against his commandment. Okay? And when you do that, let's go back to Proverbs 30. 30 verse 9 again. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. So he says, Lest I be poor and steal. Lest I be poor and steal and take the name of the Lord my God in vain. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 20. Go back to Exodus. Exodus 20. When it says thou shalt not steal. 
Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Because now you are poor, you say, you know what? Yeah, I'm poor, I'm going to steal now. Now your, your, poor, your impoverished condition is forcing you to steal. Because how did you become poor? Let's go to Proverbs. Okay. Give me Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. You see that part right there? Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. The reason why we are impoverished and we are covered with shame is because we refuse the instructions that the Lord gave unto us out of the law. If you read Romans 2, verse 18. Go ahead. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. So guess what? He says, lest I be poor and what? And steal. Now, because now you, de you decided to, re you refuse the instruction, guess what happens? Now poverty befalls you. Now that poverty is going to cause you to do what? To steal because you're hungry. You need to feed your family, so on and so forth. You start to break the commandments now. Exodus 20, verse 15. Now you are taking the name of the Lord your God in vain. Now, why am I bringing this up? What we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, it says, in the sight of the nations, the nations are going to say, surely this is a wise and an understanding people. They are not saying that right now. Why? Because among these nations, guess what we are doing? We are taking the name of the Lord our God in vain. We are making him look bad. We are embarrassing him before these nations. We are making the most that God look bad. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36, I believe. Let me see. Ezekiel 36 and verse 5. Ezekiel 36 and verse 16. Let's start there. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 16. You know what? Before you get me there, give me Ezekiel 39, 23. Let's start there first. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. The heathen shall Be what? And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. The heathen, the heathen is, the heathen, give me that in Nehemiah 5, verse 9. Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 9. Also, I said, it is not good that, it is not good that ye do. Uh -huh. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Because of the what? Because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? The heathen, our enemies. So the heathens are our enemies. Let's go back. Ezekiel 39, 23. Ezekiel chapter, chapter 39, verse 23. Mm. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. So guess what? The nations know the reason why we are at the bottom. This is the answer right here. All the nations know why we are at the bottom as a people. And guess what? If not all, the, all of them don't know. Yeah, all of them know, but not every, not the, the average Joe doesn't know. The average Indian, the average white person, no, no, the elite, they are the ones that know. The elite, they know why we are at the bottom. They know it. But the average Edomite, the average Chinese, they don't know nothing. But the ones that are, the, 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 those that run the world, the Amalek in our land, Ishmael in our land, they know why we are at the bottom. They know it. Yes, they are fighting amongst themselves about that land, as an example. But they are not, they are making sure that you are not over there because they know why we are at the bottom. Read that again. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Read. Really? Because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. You see that thing? 
So it says, because they transgress against me. So the nations know, you understand? Those are the upper echelon. They know why we are at the bottom is because we transgress against the heavenly spot. They know that thing. Now watch this. Now let's go back to Ezekiel 9. Ezekiel 36 verse 16. We're going to read that. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 16. Uh -huh. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land. When we dwelt they, in our own land, the house of Israel is all 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. They defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Meaning what? A woman on her menstrual. Because back then, there would be a place for seven days where the sister would be in, the, in that place where she separates until her menstrual cycle is done. So the Lord is saying we are like that. Because of what? Because we defiled ourselves with our own wickedness, worshiping idols, because we, we, we got full and we denied the Lord. Okay, go ahead. Verse 18, wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they, sh that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. You see that thing? And for their idols. So the house of Israel went to into idolatry. Go ahead. And I scattered them among the heathen. You see what the Lord they, did? He, hold on. He scattered us among the heathen. Our enemies like we read in Nehemiah 5. The Lord, how did he scatter us? Transatlantic, Sub-Sahara, Silk Road. Go ahead. And they were dispersed through the, through the countries according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Go ahead. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. Stop right there. They did what? They profaned my holy name. We took the name, the name of our Lord, of the Lord our God in vain. We profaned his holy name. We made the Lord look bad. Okay. They pro when we and when we entered into this land as slaves, as captives, guess what we did? We profaned his holy name. Go ahead. They profaned my holy name when they said to them, these are the people of the Lord Stop right and there. are gone. It says, these are the people of the Lord. So they are asking, the nations are saying, wait a minute, these are the people of the Lord, these ones? Because guess what? We, we read in Deuteronomy 4 verse 6, because I know some of you forgot already. Go back to Deuteronomy 4, read verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You see, in the sight of the nations, the nations what the nations will say when we keep his commandments. So this is when we do it. This is what the nations will say. When we don't do it, go back to Ezekiel now. 36 verse 20 again. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 20. And they and when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his hand, out of his land. And are gone forth out of his land. That's what we read in, if you read Luke, uh, Luke 21, verse 20 down. You look at Zephaniah, chapter 3. Okay, Deuteronomy 4, verse 28, 27 and 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. We would be scattered and so forth. Yes, that is what Baruch chapter 4. Okay, verse 6 down. We were sold to the nations. This is because of what? We profaned the name of the Lord. We took his name in vain. So when we did that, this is what the nation said. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and have gone forth out of his land. They are not saying we are a wise and understanding people because guess what we did? We took the name of our, the Lord our God in vain. Now, because we, are we have taken the name of the Lord our God in vain, in vain we worship him now. Give me that in Mark 7. Mark 7 verse 6. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 6. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, Well hath is Isaiah the, 
prophesied of your hypo hypocrisies. No, no. Read again, read it right. Mark the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Because guess what? You know that's funny? Like this whole chapter here is about what? The dispute is about unwashed hands. That's why in, 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 verse, in verse 15, Okay, meaning from verse 14 all the way up to verse 20, the Christians are confused about that. But they because they don't read the whole chapter. But verse 5 is telling you what the conversation is about. Read verse 5 again. Mark chapter 7, verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? But they eat bread with unwashed hands. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah the prophesied of your hypocrisies. No, no, no. Come on, read it right. Well hath Isaiah, that Isaiah, prophesied of you, hypocrites. Read that again. Mark chapter 7 verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites. As it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Go ahead. Howbeit, in vain do they worship me, teaching for the teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see that thing right there? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So what we are reading here is that because we've taken the name of the Lord our God in vain, now in vain we worship him. How do we worship him? We're following after the traditions of men and vain deceits, philosophies, like we read in Colossians 2, verse 8. That's why we are spoiled now, because of the vain deceit of these nations, because we've taken the name of the Lord our God in vain, where the Lord has gathered us. Okay, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them? No one. As the there is no nation that is close to the Lord as more than us. The nations are not close to the Most High. We are. We are. Go ahead. Who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him for? Because we are the only ones that guess what the Lord has given us. We, we have, we, as because of the covenant he made with our forefathers, now, because of that covenant, we are able to call upon the Lord our God. Go ahead. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? No nation has this time, this privilege. No, there's no nation on this earth has this privilege right here. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit. I believe it's chapter 4. Let me see something. Yeah, give me Tobit 4 verse 18. Tobit chapter 4 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Ask counsel of all that are wise and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Don't despise counsel that is profitable because it's profitable for doctrine. Like we read in uh, 2 Timothy 3 15. Go ahead. Bless the Lord thy God always, and desire of him that thy always be that may be directed. No, 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 no. Come on. Read it right. Read it again. Toby chapter 4 verse 19. Bless the Lord thy God always, and, de and desire of him that thy ways may be directed. Read. And that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. Read. Watch this. For every nation has not counsel. For every nation, the nations on earth, they, they do not have counsel. Because the Lord has given us, given us what? He gave us the, the, the he, gave, he given us the, the book of life. He gave us the book of life. How to live, how to eat, what to eat, how to dress. You understand? 
what to put on your clothes, what type of fabric you must have, and so forth. If you are struggling, you are having the spirit of lust, what must you do to get rid of it? The nations don't have that cancer. They don't have that, they don't have that relationship with the most high. We do, but we're still moving like eagles. Go ahead. But the Lord himself giveth all good things, mm -hmm. and he humbleth whom he will, as he will. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. You see what he's saying? Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. And fear not, my son, that we are made poor, for thou hast much wealth, if thou fear God, and depart from all sin, and do that which is pleasing in his sight. So what is Tobit telling Tobias? He's telling him, listen, because the same thing that we're reading here is the same thing that we always read in Revelation 2 verse 9. It says, for thou hast much wealth, if thou, if thou fear God and depart from all sin, and do that which is pleasing in his sight. It says, fear not, my son, that we are made poor, for thou hast much wealth. You see that, is that, give me that in Revelation 2 verse 9. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. You see that part right there? I know thy works. What is our works? Because we read about that all the time. He says, I know thy works. Give me that in Psalm 78 real quick. Psalm 78 and verse... Mm, mm, oh yeah, verse 7. Psalm 78, verse 7. Read that. Psalm 78, verse 7. That they might set their hope in God and forget not the works of God, but keep his commandments. You see what the works are? The commandments. That's the same thing that Toby is telling Tobias here. Okay, go back to Revelation 2, verse 9. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Mm -hmm. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. He says, I know thy works and tribulation. I know thy works and tribulation. Who is under tribulation? Because he's talking to he's talking to the churches that were scattered in Asia Minor. Okay. I know thy works and tribulation. Give me that in Hosea 5:15. Who's in tribulation? Let's get some more on there. Yes, he's talking to the churches that were scattered in Asia. Hosea 5 is 15. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. So the affliction is the tribulation that we are under. Okay, the affliction. We are afflicted people. So he says, I know their works because he gave us the laws and tribulation, meaning the judgment, okay, that came upon us and poverty. So remember what Tobit says. He says, and fear not, my son, that we are made poor, for thou hast much wealth. Okay? The wealth, he says, thou hast much wealth, if thou fear God and depart from all sin, and do that which is pleasing in his sight. When you keep the commandments. Okay? Go back to Revelation 2 verse 9. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich. You see that thing? But thou art rich. He says, but for thou hast much wealth. But we are rich because all the promises that are written in this book is for us. Okay? But we are rich. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Okay, that's it on there. Now let's go back. Um, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 again. So I just wanted to show you that we the most like God, He gave us access, He gave us, He gave us the law of life. These laws of life is to do what? It's for us to know how to live, how to make decisions, how to eat, what to eat, how much to eat, and so forth. No nation has this privilege. The most High God has given us everything. The nations do not have this, this privilege that we have. 
You understand? Just think about it. You understand? They've got the spirit of what? They have an addictive spirit. They don't know what to do. You know what they take them? You know where they take them? They go to rehab. Okay? And when they get, they go to those rehabilitation centers, there's still people that are doing drugs at the place. The people that work there, they still be pushing drug dealing and all that in the rehabilitation center. The Lord said, no, you, you don't got to do that. You just keep my commandments and I'll make sure that your mind is right. That's why we're so special. That's why the nations, they don't like us. Why? Because of, because of that's why they make sure that we they keep us in faith. Okay? Because no, when we get hold of this Bible, that's our power like that. Okay? Now, uh, read verse 9. You told me 4 verse 9? Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, don't forget the things which thine eyes have seen. The things which our eyes have seen is what? When we were delivered out of Egypt. When we were delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh, listen, we seen the stuff. We see Moses part the Red Sea. You understand? We saw Joshua part Jordan. We saw that. We've seen these wonders. Okay, go ahead. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. You see, he keeps saying it again and again. That's the same thing we read in Psalm 78. Psalm 78 verse 1 through to verse 5. You understand? He says, you must make them known to your children. Don't hide them from your children. Okay, you can use that as a precept. You told me 6 verse 7 as well. It goes into that. Okay, come on. Verse 11. And ye came near and stood under the mountain. And the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven. Mm. With darkness, clouds and thick darkness. That's Mount Zion. Mount Zion was on fire. Our people, so they saw the chariot. They saw the cloud over us by day and the fire by night. And the pillar of fire by night. They saw all of that thing. Could you imagine that? Our forefathers, listen, our forefathers, they saw beautiful stuff. They saw scary stuff too. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Exodus. You see, this is one of my favorite chapters in the book of Exodus. Woo! Exodus chapter 13, Exodus 13 verse 21. Exodus 13 and Exodus 14, one of my favorite chapters. Read that. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. Go ahead. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire mm. to give them light, to go by day and night. Go ahead. He took not away the pillar of, a, of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So which means our forefathers and foremothers, they saw all of on every single day, when the chariot will move to the next location, guess where? That's where we would be. That would be our next stop. They saw this thing over us. Mm, that's some beautiful stuff right there. Oh my God, man. Woo, our forefathers. That's why the Lord was so mad. Okay? With our forefathers. Ah, that's why the Lord was so mad. He was mad as hell. That was saying, listen, your essence are going into captivity. You need to learn. I got to take, this is how I'm going to punish Israel because Israel don't listen. I need to get your intention, Israel, and I'm going to do this to you. That's some heavy stuff. Woo, that's some heavy stuff right there. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy 4 verse 12 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire, 
he heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only he heard a voice. So we only heard a voice. We didn't see any similitude because we were going to create that and worship it. That's Israel. This is, that's Israel. That's how Israel moves. So the Lord knows us. Okay, go ahead. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Now read the 13 and one more again. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. It says he. So Moses is telling us that the Lord wrote upon them, he wrote ten commandments upon two tables of stone. The Lord did that. Next verse. Watch this. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. So now, what I want to show you is that when Moses, when Mount Zion was on fire, Moses went over there. Okay? Moses went over there and he received the lively oracles to teach unto us. And guess what? The Lord wrote on those two tables of stone. Okay? Because he says, um, read verse 14 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Now watch this. Give me Exodus 31 verse 18. Exodus chapter 31 verse 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. No, it was written with the finger of Moses. Written with the finger of God. So these two tables of stone, the Lord wrote on. The Lord wrote on those stones. The Lord did that. The Ten Commandments, the Lord rose on those tables. Read again verse 18. All praise to the Most High. They are rising this day. Read again. Exodus chapter 31 verse 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Now jump down to 32 verse 15. Exodus chapter 32, verse 15. Read. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. And the one side, on the one side, and on the other, were they written. Read. And the tables were the work of God. And the, writ and the writing was the writing of God. Graven upon the tables. Graven upon the tables. So the Lord wrote that. The Lord wrote that. Because remember, it says, even the Ten Commandments. So now, when you think about it now, when you go back, uh, when it says, Moses wrote all the words of this law. Remember, it is not just the Ten Commandments. Okay? It's more than that. So the Ten Commandments is what? They branch out, they branch out into a much, a much larger tree. So the Ten Commandments is the root, is the foundation, which branches out into a much larger tree. You understand? I'll give you an example. Give me the last Exodus, no, Leviticus, the last chapter and the last verse. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 34. Mm -hmm. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. You see that thing? So, you know, because you're not going to find rape in the Ten Commandments, but you'll find it in, uh, in the book of Deuteronomy. You'll find it in Leviticus. Okay? So, these are laws. These are commandments. So, it wasn't just the Ten. Okay? Okay. Go back. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 4. And verse... 
Ve sitting. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 15. Mm-hmm. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on that day that the Lord speak unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. So this similitude is talking about what? It says you didn't see the shape of the Lord at that point. You didn't see that. Because they were going to draw it and worship it. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers. Okay. Number 12. You know what? Read 15 and 16 together. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on that day. That the Lord speak unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Read. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. You see what it's saying? It says, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image of the similitude of any figure. Because guess what Israel was going to do? If Israel saw the shape, you understand that the shape of some a man that is speaking, they were going to make a graven image of that thing and they're going to worship it. So the Lord is saying, I didn't speak to you in any similar truth. You understand? When I spoke to you in Mount Horeb, out of the midst of the fire. Now watch this. Give me that in Numbers 12 verse 6. Because he gave Moses, he, he was dealing with Moses direct. Watch this. Moses was hit. Numbers 12 verse 6. Numbers chapter 12 verse 6. Mm-hmm. And he said, Hear now my words. If they be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Go ahead. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. He says, my servant Moses, though, he's not like that. He's faithful in all mine house. Go ahead. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. You see that thing? With him will I speak mouth to mouth. Because Moses was up there on Mount Zion. Okay, while Mount Zion was on fire. And he was being given the oracle to give unto us. Go ahead. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You see that thing? Because they were murmuring, they were complaining about Moses. That was Aaron and Miriam. Okay? So, let's go back. Because he gave the Moses plain, the Lord plain. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not... uh, mm, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So on and so forth. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 4. Read verse 17. Read verse 16 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 16. Mm-hmm. This ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. When it says the likeness of male or female, because guess what? What, what Israel was doing, because remember, if you read Exodus 32, what Israel was doing, they started, they created what? The likeness of images, okay? In that in that place, they created that golden calf, okay? But what I want to show you here is that it says the likeness of male or female. Because the likeness of male or female, the female part, it goes into your the Egyptian gods that we worship. You understand? Things like, um, you know, Hathor, Kitesh. Those, those, those plagues, those, those idols that the Lord destroyed in Egypt, okay, Kitesh, Hathor, you understand, the goddess of beauty, the goddess of health, and so forth, yes, okay, because we worship the same things that the Egyptians was worshipping, we worship them, okay, the feminist movement, the feminist movement, Pella, it was over there in Egypt, the feminist movement come from far, the white man gets it from there. Okay, go ahead. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth, 
the likeness of any winged fowl that that flies in the air. So it says the likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Like, you know, he cats. Remember, the, the, if you read the book of Exodus 12, you understand, from Exodus 12 on up, no, no, not even from Exodus 12, but before Exodus 12. When you read Exodus 7, Exodus 8, Exodus 9, 10, and so forth, you read about the plague that the Lord was destroying those Egyptian idols because we worship and believe those things. So all the, all the, the idols that the Egyptians was worshipping, he was doing the same thing. Okay? So when it says the likeness of any beast, just go back to Exodus uh, when you read about the plague. Okay? The, the beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flyeth in the air. Okay? So because we, we believe in those things. Your, those gods, what, what are they? Like your, your there, there was a there was, a, there was the fly. We worship the fly. Okay? Those things. We worship those things. Beelzebub. We worship those things. Okay? The God of the sky and so forth. Newt. We was into those things. So that's why he keep reminding us of that. Go ahead. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. You see what he's saying? The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. So the things that be creeping on the ground. What was we worshiping in Egypt? Okay. Because remember the Lord, what the Lord did. We believe that there was a there was a there was a there was a sky god. You understand? that protected the crops from being destroyed and so forth. The Lord, what did he send? He sent locusts to destroy their vegetation and to eat, to, eat their, to eat their crops and all that stuff. Yes. We worship that stuff. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground or of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Dagon. Remember Dagon? Okay, the fish god. The thing that the Pope has. So just read, just, just watch the video. You see the Passover video that we have? You're going to get all this information from that video, actually. Now that I think about it. Because I know some of you haven't watched it. Well, that's to your own destruction. I'm not going to get into the details of that. You can watch the video. Everything is in there. Read verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. And lest thou lift up thine eyes into heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So now he's saying, um, you lift up thy eyes unto the heaven, and when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now watch this. Give me the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Surely, vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and could not, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster. Go ahead. But deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the, to be the gods which, did, which govern the world. So now it says, the, our vanity and our ignorance of the most high God be by seeing the things that he has done, we're supposed to acknowledge the one that made them. So now he says, instead of doing that, we started to worship the creature, I mean the creation, rather than the creator. But deemed either fire, we started to look up to those things, fire or wind or this air, the circle of the stars, you understand, in the heaven, or the violent water, that's why some people, they worship water, or the light of heaven, the sun and the moon, to be God, to be the God which governed the world. Now we started to we started to believe that these are the gods that govern the world. 
That's why in Egypt they worship Ra, the sun god. Today, the CC, they've got what? The star, they've got the dove. You understand the fault that flies up there in the heaven? You see that thing? So now we are taking these things to be God. Next verse. Go ahead. With, the, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be God? You see what we did? We took these things to be God. Go ahead. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty has created them. The first author of beauty has created them. So now we took these things to be God. That's why the Moses is commanding us, don't do that. Okay, you'll be breaking the first commandment. Okay, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 20. But the Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Because we are the people of inheritance. Next verse, watch this. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over, that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto that good land, which the Lord thy God gave thee for an inheritance. So now Moses keep reminding us, uh, listen, I'm, if the Lord is still mad because of what you did. Go back to Deuteronomy 3.26. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 26. Read. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. So now Moses keep, he keep, bring, he keep bringing this issue up over and over. He keeps reminding us that you are the reason why this happened. Because also this thing really was bothering him. That's why he, he keeps bringing it over and over. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 4. Read verse 22 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 22. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. And possess that good land, the land that floweth with milk and honey. Go ahead. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy, which the Lord thy God hath, hath forbidden thee. So now he's warning us again, so listen, take heed to yourself, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God. What is the covenant? The commandment. You can write this down, Psalm 78 verse 10, that's the precept. Lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, okay, which he made with you and made, and made you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord God has forbidden thee. Go ahead. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God is a, is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. You see what he's telling us? He's warning us. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Go ahead. Verse 25. When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, in the and shall corrupt. And ye shall have remained long in the land. And ye shall have remained long in the land. Now this land is talking about, is not talking about the wilderness. He's talking about now we are in the land now. It says when you have lived long, upon long in the land. You understand? Because this is going into what? It goes into, it's going to go into the kings when David is ruling. It's going to go into the judges. You understand? It, 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 it goes into, it goes into that. When we are ruling upon the earth, and then it goes into the judges, the book of Ruth, the kings and chronicles, it will go into all of that. That's what he's talking about when he says, and ye shall have remained long in the land. So now Moses is prophesying that when, while, when we are in the land, after generations, we're going to do some evil stuff, and we're going to be kicked out. That's what he's saying. Okay, go ahead. 
and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. Go ahead. I call heaven and earth to witness against you in this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from the from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Because we would go into slavery. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So he's telling us that we are going to be scattered. That's what he's telling us right here. Because the scattering, this is not just going into the transatlantic. No, no. He's going into the, uh, the Assyrian Empire. You understand? When um, Chiklas Pelezer, Shalmaneser, okay, Sennacherib, when they came against us, they came against Northern Kingdom, and then the Babylonians came, Nebuchadnezzar, okay, so on and so forth. He's going into that. Then the Persian, okay, Greece, Rome, so on and so forth. So he's going into that. Then later on, you understand, after 70 AD, 1,600 years later, 1,400 years later, the transatlantic sub-Sahara and the Silk Road. He's going into that. That's what he's saying here. This is not just talking about the transatlantic slave trade. Okay? Come on. And there ye shall serve, uh, and there ye shall serve God, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat nor smell. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 54. And the way he says we are going to be scattered in verse 27, you can still use the same precept because it's going into the same thing. Read that, Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And, thou, and they thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So that's the work of man's hands, wood and stone. Go back. Deuteronomy 4 verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So he said now, but if, from then, meaning in the lands of our captivity, where we have, where the Lord would have scattered us, it says, guess what? It says, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Because if, when we, for us to seek the Lord our God, what needed to have happened? What needed to have happened? Read the next verse. Verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, you see that thing right there? When thou art in tribulation. What is the tribulation? Captivity, slavery. You understand? Because we would be scattered. How? Via slave ships. Forced migration. Colonization. Now, when we are in those lands, because we were scattered through colonization, forced migration, you understand? The transatlantic slave trade and sub saharan Silk Road. When we are in tribulation in those lands, Go ahead. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee. The things that would come upon, hold on, the things that would come upon us and all these things would come upon you. Now, remember, it says, these things will come upon you. That goes from the Assyrian Empire all the way up to the Roman Empire. And then from then, what did he say now? Even unto what? Even in the latter days. Even in the latter days. The latter days began when Christ was born. When Christ was born was the beginning of the last day. Even in the latter days. Because Christ would prophesy again when he was in Rome. That listen, you're going to go into slavery. Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. 70 AD. Okay. So he's going into that as well. But when he says... Upon he says, when these or when all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, meaning what they will start from the Assyrians all the way to Rome, 
and then from Rome, that's when Christ was born, will be the beginning of the last day. That will go into the sub Sahara Silk Road in the transatlantic. Go ahead. Even in the latter days, mm -hmm. if thou if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient to his unto his voice. And shall be obedient unto his voice. Give me that in Deuteronomy 27, verse 10. Deuteronomy 27, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So now this goes into our brothers and sisters, especially we hear this from the women and the pastors. You know, God spoke to me. This is how God speaks to you. By keeping his commandments. Read that again, verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 10. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So when we hear somebody saying, no, God speak to me. If they are not speaking, if the Lord, this is how the Lord speaks to us. When you do his commandments, by you reading his commandments and applying it, that's how he communicates with you. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 31. Okay. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. You see that? Listen. Now, you see, the more you read this, you start to realize, really, our forefathers, man. Woo! Our forefathers. Our forefathers were on another level. Okay? They, let, they kept the most high God's laws so perfectly that every time the Lord is talking to us, it's listen, based upon the covenant I made with your father, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Those were heavy, heavy forefathers. Okay? Ah, woo! This is beautiful. Okay? Go ahead. For ask now of the days that are past. You see what he which says? Which would be food. It says, because ask now of the days that are past. Meaning what? Remember the days of old. Like we read in Deuteronomy 32 verse 7, Job 8 and 8. He's going into the same thing. Go ahead. For us now of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth. Meaning from the and, time of Adam. Go ahead. And ask from the one side of heaven unto the other whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is or hath been heard like it. Now watch this, go ahead. Or hath God, oh, no, did no, ever, no. verse 33, come on. Verse 33, did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and live? You see that nobody has ever heard that. God, the most that God speaking out of the midst of a flaming fire. Nobody has seen that before but us. Go ahead. Or had God essayed to go out and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war. By what? And by, and by war. And by war. Because he's a man of war. When he went to deliver us out of Egypt, what do you think he brought to the Egyptians? He brought war upon them. Okay, go ahead. And by war, and by war, and by mighty hand, and by stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Okay. Unto thee it was shown that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Now, you see, he's, he's giving us, he's rehashing the history because Israel, we tend to have selective amnesia. Okay, go ahead. Out of heaven, he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. And upon earth, he showed thee his great fire. And thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. Mm, go ahead. And because he loved thy fathers, 
Therefore, he chose their seed after them and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. Go ahead, come on. To drive out nations from before thee, greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee, to give thee their land for an inheritance, as it is this day. Come on. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. You, oh, he says there's none else. There's no, there's no such so-called God on this earth that can do the stuff that I'm telling you right now, that I've done already. So the Lord is what? What's the most like God doing? He's establishing, listen, I'm the one, you are the only reason why you, you are here is because of me. I'm the one that's installing this place. Moreover, he's saying, you see what, you see verse 39? It says, now know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart. Meaning what? Everything that I just told you, I've commanded, I've taught you, let it sink in your spirit. That's what he's saying. Don't be ungrateful. That's what he said. Don't be unthankful, children. Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 60. 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 60. 2nd Ezra chapter 8. Yeah, read verse 60. Second Ezra, chapter 8, verse 60. But they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them, and were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. You see the problem? This is the problem with Israel right here. It says, but what? It says, but they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them. That's the same thing we read in the book of Ezekiel. They've, def they've profaned my name. They've profaned my holy name. That's the same thing we read in Ezekiel 36 verse 20. Ezra is saying the same thing. But they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them and were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. Hmm. Go back. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 40 now. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 40. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. So he's saying, listen, everything that I just told you, because from verse 25, he's going into prophecy. Okay? Then verse 32 down to verse 39 is, is giving us the stuff that he did for us. But verse 39 is telling you, listen, all the things that I'm telling you from verse 25 down, not, not negating what we read from verse 1, but verse 25 is going into prophecy when we go off. Okay? Verse 39, it says, let it sink it in, let it sink in your spirit. Verse 40 says, do the things that I've commanded you that you may inherit the kingdom forever. That's what it's saying. Right? Verse 41. Then Moses served three cities. Seven. Then Moses severed three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. When he says the three cities toward the sun rising, this is going into what? This is going into uh, when he was dividing, when he's dividing allotment, he was allotting land for the tribes. Go ahead. That the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares and hated him not in times past, and that fleeing unto, the, unto one of these cities, he might live. So now, yes, this goes into the allotment of land, and in those allotments of land, the Levites, the Levites had cities. They call them the cities of refuge. So if you read the book of Numbers, hmm, let me see real quick, one second. The cities of refuge, this is what this is going into, okay? Um, Numbers chapter 35. So if you want to know about that, you just read Numbers 35. So uh, Numbers 35, the whole chapter, you're going to read about those cities of refuge. 
okay, cities for the Levites, there will be cities of refuge. And the thing that Moses is talking about here in verse 41 and 42, this, what we is going into here, you can read about it in detail in number 35. Okay, come on. Namely, Beza in the wilderness, in the plain, in the plain country of Reuben, of the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead, of the Gerites, and Kojan, or Golan, in Bashan, of the Manasites. Manasites, Manasites. So you've got Golan today is Golan High. Golan High, that's in Jerusalem, okay? That's the West Bank, okay, next to the Mediterranean Sea, which is also called the Great Sea. So here's this name, the Beza in the wilderness, in the plain country, okay, of the Rubenites, that's the type of Ruben, okay, in uh, in Ramoth, in Gilead, okay, Ramoth, Gilead, okay, that was the East now, okay, we saw it on the map a couple of days ago, okay, and then of Gad, this is the type of Gad, the Gadites, Golan in Bashan of the Manasseh. So it's Manasseh, Gad, and Ruben. Okay, go ahead. Because remember, the reason why he's not mentioning Levi here, why is he not mentioning Levi? Who can pick what he's saying? Let me hear you, uh, Brother Haggai, take a shot. He's not mentioning Levi, but these are the cities of refuge. Why is he not mentioning Levi, but he's mentioning these uh, three tribes? So I believe because the the Levites had not been given allotment of land as yet. No, no, they were never given allotment of land. So when you say not as yet, no, they were never given allotment of land. But you are right in mentioning uh, Levi, but Levi would be where? They were not given allotment of land, but where would Levi be? So they would be um, divided amongst the tribes. Sir. Correct, correct. So... Those things of refuge about of the Levites and all that, yes, they were among these tribes also. They were among all Israel, but he is just going into the three tribes that were on the other side, not before the side. When you read number 32, you can read about that. It goes into great details about uh, how he divided because there was there were tribes that didn't want to go over Jordan because they said, listen, we've got a lot of cattle and so forth. So can we stay on this side? We don't want to cross over. But Moses said, no, 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 no. You must help your brethren get the, also get access to land. They must conquer and get land. Then once they, your brethren are good, you can go back. Okay, go ahead. Verse 44. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel. And they came forth out of Egypt. Read. On this side, Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote, after they were come forth out of Egypt. Read. And they possessed his land, and the land of Og, king, king of Bashan, Two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. Read. From Aurora, which is by the bank of the river, Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. Read. And all the plain on this side Jordan, eastward, even unto the sea of the plain under the springs of Pisgah. So now, that's Deuteronomy chapter 4 right there. I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end the class. There's a lot of stuff that I covered. So just go back to your notes and you know read about There's a lot of stuff I didn't cover as well in this chapter. If I had to precept every single thing, we never finish. Okay? So, but Lord's will, tomorrow I'm going to go over again with this until we finish the book of Deuteronomy and then I'm going to work my way backwards. So I'm going to do the whole of Deuteronomy, then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do Numbers, and then I'll do Leviticus, and I'll do Exodus, I'll do Genesis, and then 
we'll do the book of Joshua, okay? And break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had substained. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that class. All praise to the most high God.